from uh, Catch Business School. And, uh, this uh, presentation has been made with Joel uh, Torsten and Tom Amorval from Norway. Maybe you didn't know, but in Norway they are producing wine. That's not true. But uh, Tom and Joel are specialists in what they call niche market. And we met uh, five years ago in, in a marketing congress where, where they were interested by my presentation about uh, about uh, and not this one but another one and there was a link between their investigation on, on niche market and my context. They, they were specialists, they are specialists on the fish industry and salmon and so on in the niche. So we were working on, on, on this idea and the presentation is about uh, are there any strategic foundation for the country? Of course, my, my answer will not be so clear, but we have some indication about that. So here is the, the structural presentation. What is the niche market and competitive advantage in the case? The link between the resource capability and the resource-based theory. And then we'll go to the, to the context of the country presently. And uh, we, we will try to take out some key elements. So according to theory, uh, a niche market is a small market consisting of an individual customer or small group of consumers with similar characteristics or needs. And maybe you can take in mind, and I suppose you know, of course, this, but three, four criteria can um, structure a niche market. And we have to check this narrow size, specialization, case, can we imagine yes or no that Grand Cru are specially specialized, differentiate, yes, but specialize in something different. For instance, if we take the Bordeaux industry, Bordeaux industry, uh, Grand Cru represents only 5% of the volume. Could we say that they are specialized? And if we say yes, how could we answer to this question that where is the specialization? Or Grand Cru, when we know that the branding is quite the same, when we know that the winemaking process, the wine aging could be the same, except the fact that they have this notoriety, they have this investment, and so on. Differentiation, of course, we'll see that Grand Cru are easily differentiated from, from the anonymous, anonymous producer. And last point, maybe the most important, effective barriers in the case. We call it in Bordeaux the network, which is kind of discussion about that. So the aim more or less of the, of the research should be, but can we identify some links between the market-related resources and capabilities and the sustainable competitive advantage? Um, a few words about Grand Cru. Maybe I suppose you know all this, but I will come back to these points. We have a support, maybe the, our most, uh, <laughs> according to some, the most efficient marketing tool for Bordeaux Grand Cru comes from the 19th century at the moment of Napoleon III that decided to make a, a little order in the classification, what we call the classement of 1855, and this is still working. And for, for what we know, for many observers, many informants also, this is the, the, the key factor to differentiate. So we have around 140 chateaus. They are um, located in four main terroirs, which is in the east of Bordeaux, saint emilion and around. Uh, in the north of Bordeaux, uh, what we call Medoc, and especially uh, Au Medoc, with uh, some elitist uh, appellations like uh, saint Estephe, Poyac, uh, Saint-Julien, Margot, and so on. Once again, I repeat that the reality of Bordeaux is not the Grand Cru. Grand Cru are just a locomotive, but the reality of Bordeaux is 95% of the producers are out of the system. The reality of Bordeaux is more about what we call the Côte, five Côte, Côte de Blaye, Côte de Bourg, Première Côte, Côte de France, and uh, Côte de Castillon, and above all, the reality of Bordeaux is Bordeaux, Bordeaux Supérieur. So don't think that we are here working on Bordeaux, we are just working on Bordeaux Grand Cru. 
I am not coming back to the La Place de Bordeaux because yesterday you, you, you had a different presentation, but you have to take in mind that the tradition, the business model of Bordeaux vineyard is to separate the, the, the job of, uh, depending on the, the place you have in the, in, the, in the industry. And of course, what you have to know, of course, that m most of the Grand Cru haven't any marketing activities, most of them. Some that uh, get out uh, of a system like Chateau Lato that decided to, to, to go, of course, just after the 2010, a wonderful <laughs> millesima, and they say, uh, uh, I'm, st I'm, I'm going to stop with uh, this idea that merchants are, are picking up the margin, and I'm able today with uh, uh, alumni coming from HC or coming from uh, London schools of economics and so on to do my own business without going to the merchants and so on. I, I'm not going back to this uh, debate, it's very really important. Most of them are exported and uh, once again they are focused on production and, and not market. So it's very, very specific, very strange maybe. And uh, it's not so easy for a marketing professor to teach this when you are in front of your students because it's kind of anti-marketing. The Grand Cru is focused on production. And many times I did the experience to ask at the end of, of the end, who drinks your wine? And very often the answer is, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's in Hong Kong or in New York and so on, but really, it's not really my, my concern. This is the concern of the merchants. Easy to say here, but when you're in front of students coming from China or from uh, elsewhere in the world, explain this is the marketing for the Grand Cru, uh, you have to repeat. <laughs> <laughs> so the resource-based theory, tangible, uh, Stefan has mentioned this, uh, uh, before, so tangible and intangible assets. Capabilities are defined as tangible and intangible assets enable, that enable a firm to take full advantage of the others it controls. Um, we, we went also to what, what the Grand Cru says when they tell the story. And for that, we pick up the content of the uh, uh, Guide de l'Union des Grands Crus with another colleague of mine, Florian Liva. We worked on a content analysis of a story of, uh, expressed by the Grands Crus in, in the guide. And here you have the main list of how they tell the story. They speak about history, revolution, uh, the Middle Age, uh, the king, uh, Plantagenet, Aliénor d'Aquitaine, and so on, dream, history, but we'll come back to this point. What is the key role of history? Is it important for an average consumer to understand that uh, in, in, in the 18th century, there was a new owner came, coming from Deutschland, or coming from uh, Holland, or coming from England, that make a joint venture, etc. Is it important? Could have a debate about that. Of course, there are geographical and geological aspects of the story. It means that uh, when you are in Medoc, you are not in saint Emilio, so you have to, to express this, you have to express what is inside of your, of your ground. Then we go to Varietal, but it's not so easy to differentiate, because in Bordeaux, we are more or less so focused on Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon for, for the red, for instance. It's not so easy. Then they try to express that, yes, saint Estef is very feminine, meanwhile, Poyaf is very powerful, and, and so on. They try to express this idea of brand image. I repeat, not the brand, but the, the appellation. Some of them try to do this. And then they go to winemaking and to winemaking uh, process. It's strange that uh, you have no, in the labels, the name of the winemaker most of the time, except for Mr. Uh, Roland, uh, Roland, Michel Roland, for instance, but it's kind of snobism, like Parker, Parker Roland, of course. But except that, you have you have most of the time the the, 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 the name of the guy. It's, it's, it's not the same thing to listen to the Fifth Symphony of uh, of uh, Beethoven by Mr. Karajan or by Mr. Roland. So interpreting the. the, the 
partition of, the, the, of it's, it's not the same, but in the case for now, for now, I think in the future it will come. For now, we have not the name of the artist. We have the name of the owner. We have the name of a Palacian. We have the name of a, this kind of thing. And less than that, you have a certification and technical investment because most of the time today these are not families, but we have banks, we have insurance, you have some some guys that have a lot of money with that. So a method to work was two times, because so this is related to a uh, niche marketing approach, value, rarity, non-limitability, non and organizational explo exploitability, so kind of questionnaire. But I'm not going to speak about the quantitative aspect, I just want to, to, to give the main information we picked up. So first, 60 uh, respondents coming from, so 24 grand cru producers, four brokers, uh, courtiers, four negotiants, merchants, eight retailers, salesperson in the wine industry, and others executive in the wine industry, more or less. We had a questionnaire about what are the resource capabilities of the grand cru according to your opinion. And then we, 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 we worked with six key informants on this, on this uh, raw material, I should say, to, to, to give us the, the interpretation with three academics and uh, three uh, professional, that's, that's the, the, the way we work. And very quickly, the, the results first all come from either the product and communication categories, neither, I mean, I'm professor in marketing, so it's once again a confirmation that this is a strange uh, approach, neither, neither distribution, never tries, never marketing information, of course they haven't, <laughs> Never planning or marketing implementation, which is for us, for us, for a marketing guy, uh, surprising given the importance of the uh, studies in, in marketing. Second kind of results uh, of the, the uh, so it's likely that only one of them, the terroir, terroir of course, is based on mm. objective. And we say this uh, uh, recognized uh, aspect because the terroir, by definition, is unique. Is unique. You haven't the same soil, you haven't the same quality in Pauillac than saint Estef or in saint julien even if they are neighbor. So it's, it's logic, it's uh, scientific. But this criterion has full legitimacy since, by definition, it differentiates products. Indeed, each terroir is unique, but once again, when we analyze the data coming from the 60 person and then the interpretation of the key informants, well, uh, the brand image and the classification of uh, 1855, the classement of 1855, was well, maybe more important than the fact that uh, to differentiate, uh, you have to push the idea that you are Margot. Uh, meanwhile, uh, or you are, uh, or you are Paul Roll, for instance. Once again, maybe uh, maybe you have uh, comments about that. We'll see. But maybe one of the comments is, uh, this is easy to use, and this is a kind of uh, we like rankings, we like the benchmark, we like performance, we like. I don't, but uh, many consumers like this because it's uh, easy to, to say according to my budget, according to, to, to my self-esteem, according to blah, 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 I don't know, uh, according to my willingness to pay, uh, I decide that I go to a first, a second, a third, or fifth uh, Grand Cru because, because it's the wedding of my daughter, because it's a gift for her. What are you going to do with, with, with this wine? This is far more important than the performance. In France, we have a sentence from producer to say, qu'est-ce que tu dis avec ton vin? What do you say with your wine? Which is not about performance. It's about what, what is the, the feeling, what is the, 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 the project you have with that. So kind of discussion could be, in the case of Bordeaux, one might think that this is as much a matter of time, history, yes, one minute, history, the fact that since uh, the 19th century, we have this ranking, we have the placement de Jacques, and once again, it works. It works because we love benchmark. But if you understand what I mean for me, there is a question behind this. I think so. 
think so. The matter of history as well as geography, the matter of representation as well as intrinsic parameters. And uh, close to conclusion, the reality of niche market is based both on intrinsic and uh, uh, qualities of production, but also ability to create, develop, and protect this uniqueness. This is theory about niche. The economic performance of a product is often based on the three layers, according to Kotler and Armstrong. The first one is really what is inside of your product, the components, the raw material, the soil, the ground. The roots, the appellation. I'm not so sure that the average consumer is able to understand, even if it's a grand cru, why this component has a power of differentiation. So the second approach is, qu'est-ce que tu as dit avec ton vin? So, the wine for what? For instance, I have a student of mine from presently doing a memoir on snobism and wine in Vietnam comes from Vietnam. Vietnam was before we had some links, of course, with uh, Vietnam. So in Vietnam, after the liberation, the next generation came back to the market, came back to Western uh, way of life and so on. And the, the student expressed to me that my grandfather uh, fight against French and, and Americans to, 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 to liberate, to, for the freedom of, Viet of Vietnam. But my father came back to, to Western way of life, and my father bought buy, uh, buys a, a lot of concru because he has money. Okay, and you know what he do, does with the concru? He has the concru in a in a what? Okay, and he, when when we have friends, when we have family, he open the idea and he shows the concru. But never, we never drink any bottle of wine. Never. It's just about showing, sharing, but not opening the bottom. We can smile about this, but what, what, what is the, the use of the planet? Collector. OK, and, and, and we focused on, on performance. We focused on, on the, these rankings. We focused on this evaluation. But once again, I'm not sure that even if in a niche market you have to prove that you have better performance than your competitors. I'm not sure that this is the most important to make sense with, uh, for the consumer. I'm okay. clear, so I'll limit uh, as a conclusion with uh, Chateau Fiozal from Grave. <laughs> uh, does the, sorry, the average consumer really know the specificity of a famous terroir? What is the difference between the Grave and the and the uh, and the Medoc, maybe for you it's obvious, but for the average consumer it, is, it isn't. Even if it's ready, is ready to buy to buy a grand cru. What are the real motivation of a buyer? And uh, once again, what is the use you are going to do with that? And and maybe one day we'll stop with this religion of benchmark, because I think that the competition is not a tradition in agriculture. In agriculture, you have neighbors, you have people with your friends. When there is a freezing, well, we are in of this May, we have, we have been frozen in Bordeaux, so we are not in competition. We are facing this, this, uh, this weather, and we have to do with that. So the religion of benchmark, the religion of, uh, of evaluation, the religion of uh, where it's in Grand Cru, but also all around the, the, the wine world, maybe one day we'll, we'll, we'll be over with that, because because uh, it will not give sense. But for now, once again, not 1885, classification really, is it really necessary? In a long-term approach, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. We have time for a couple questions. Well, I'll ask a question. Um, is the niche Grand Cru or is the niche the uh, Bordeaux, the general Bordeaux appellation? Well, maybe some of you can, can answer. For me, really, the project of the, of the presentation was really to, to, to check that uh, the Grand Cru, according to the four, four criteria, uh, the Grand Cru is a niche market. And yes, the answer is yes in the case. If we go to Bordeaux, I don't, I don't think so. 
even if there is the name, the magic word, uh, Bordeaux, maybe, uh, uh, no. Because the duplication, for instance, of, of uh, Petit Bordeaux, which is not, uh, which I like Petit Bordeaux, most of the time I drink Petit Bordeaux, not Grand Cru, even if it's a modest wine, it's very easy to duplicate uh, if I'm out of Bordeaux area, for instance. And we have some wonderful producer that, that, that duplicate the, the, the Bordeaux blending, for instance, with a, a little bit of Petit Verdot and, and then Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon, and it works. So for me, Bordeaux in a large size is not a niche for me. Grand Cru is a part. I don't know if uh, you agree.
um, the almost impossibility for people to imitate because they can't imitate because they don't have the membership of that classification. But but also just wonder, and this is I mean, the whole link between you know, the quality and the wines that are produced. I mean, is there a significant difference in the quality between these wines and, and other wines, you know, the Buddha Superior and stuff like that? But in the minds of people who are buying your wines, you remember when I mean, you and, and Elve and I went out to that restaurant and we, we were given a really nice bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon, like a 250 dollar bottle, we took it there, we drank it. But the person that produced that said, you know, I produced a $60 cab. Is there a real difference? He said, no. <laughs> but everybody buys my expensive one because that's where my brand has been built. And so, so when I think in a sense what, what that 1855 classification did, and it was based on price, right, um, is actually sort of set in stone and made it almost impossible for, for anybody else to really replicate uh, and create the quote-unquote value. So I think it's sort of nice. That's the reason it's a good illustration of the niche market. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>
the entrepreneurial strategy formation, and that's being moderated by age and size of the firm. Some background. Um, right now, uh, a topic that's, that, that's pretty hot in the entrepreneurship field is looking at the contextual factors. Um, and it's understanding entrepreneurship by context. Understanding entrepreneurs saying, you know, uh, the entrepreneurship literature has started off by looking at um, traits of entrepreneurs and, and who, who are they and what are they about and what makes them such a unique character. Um, that has evolved quite a bit from uh, that research and now it's kind of looking at it from a macro approach, macroeconomic approach saying what are the contextual factors, the environmental factors that are having an impact on entrepreneurship. So it's a, it's a hot area. Um, which is the, 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 the survey data is kind of brushing upon. Um, there's little research that actually observes these contextual factors, and this study is going to build on the wine business exploratory study that looked on the firm and age back in 1999. Um, uh, Armin Galinsky has a, uh, a paper in the Journal of uh, Small Business Strategy uh, looking at, <coughs> specifically looking at, does size matter? in regards to uh, uh, the approach that uh, wineries are taking. So the main research questions that I'm approaching here um, is what are the relationships of the industry-specific systems of entrepreneurship in the wine business? Which factors in the operating environment are perceived to pose the greatest challenges for wine businesses today? And what extent do wine business characteristics such as age and size impact the responses of wineries to those challenges. And practically speaking, um, which strategy, which strategic leadership skills do wine businesses need <coughs> to perform or to, uh, to develop in the foreseeable future? Excuse me. So, in the literature, when we look at um, the wine industry management, um, we see that we actually see a geographical difference of what is needed in regards to uh, these types of skill sets. So for example, in Australia, uh, literature is talking about we need less focus on technical expertise. In Chile, it's a fostering of collaborations for marketing. In France, um, we're looking at management teams and repositioning. And Spain, we're looking at focus on the infrastructure and marketing and education. And in the US, it's a marketplace, it's a communication skills, um, and sharing of practices. Okay. Now, you might argue with this, but this is what the literature says. Well, the author, two of the authors are here in this room. They might argue with it. <laughs> All right, well, fantastic. <laughs> so now, if you look at uh, size and age of firms, right? Um, now we're looking at, you know, uh, size and age of a firm can influence the risk taking, it can influence its innovation, it can influence its entrepreneurial entry strategies. Um, size and age of the firm, the new entrants will tend to pursue aggressive strategies in their niches and niche construction and entrepreneurial behavior. And older, more established firms will tend to build out their management systems, right? Um, the size of an organization can explain the variance in strategy and performance. So we have some literature that really does say that, look, you know, we, size and age does matter in the strategies of the firms. So just one more piece of literature looking at, at the environmental context from uh, the entrepreneurship literature, right? 2014, relatively recent. There's uh, theoretical approaches to looking at, at the environmental context. Specifically, they look at it in regards to building out, like, there's an industry and technology type of a context, environmental context, like what industry, where is the, uh, the rate of technology within that industry. Um, the social component, we kind of talked a little bit about that in here from previous uh, presentations. Uh, what is the, the networking and, and things of that sort organizational, institutional, and policy. 
Um, these are the types of things right now that the entrepreneurship literature is looking at from a theoretical perspective. And so now, I think that this, this data will be able to give it new light um, and actually have it. So the hypothesis building off of the literature is there's four. Um, firm size will impact the perceptions of the uh, critical strategic challenges facing the U.S. wine industry. Um, the second one is that entry order will moderate the perceptions of the critical strategic challenges facing the U.S. wine industry. Firm size will impact the perceptions of the necessary strategic responses to the challenges facing the U.S. wine industry. And the entry order will moderate the perceptions of the necessary strategic responses to challenges facing the U.S. wine industry. Now, I know that this is a lot of hypotheses. People usually like boxes and arrows. It seems it makes it a little bit easier. Um, so to keep things simple, um, looking at managerial thought and how that responds, how they perceive these things and how they respond to these things, we have, um, oops, there we go, firm size and firm age, which is now uh, looking to moderate that. So the setting um, is looking at the Northern California wineries identified from the um, Unified Wine and Grape Symposium. Uh, the data, which seems to be missing, <laughs> which I always hate happens when I have missing data. Um, <laughs> happens, there's, two, there's two sets of data. The first is a, a, the 1999 um, data that um, uh, in the Galinsky et al. Uh, 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 article of 2000 um, is looking at their analysis. We don't really have the raw data from that, so we have to work off of that analysis, which is okay for our purposes. Um, and then we have the, the uh, 2015 uh, survey data of uh, 308 wineries. Um, and so that's all of Northern California uh, region. And then the analysis that was used is a cross tabulation and uh, a, a chi square analysis to assess the statistical association between categorical variables. The measurements. So the dependent variable um, is the perceived challenges and responses, which are responses to the survey questions, um, looking at the environmental factors most impacting the business and um, the skills needed in the future. The size of the wineries are split between two groups, um, one which is below uh, uh, 20,000 cases, uh, like in the United States, we like to use cases as a measure. And then the age of the winery is about 20, 20 years. All right? If we want to kind of put it in a two by two to make it even more simpler, um, we could say that we've got group one here with age and size being smaller and newer. We had 191 respondents. Average age is about eight years. Um, if we were a little, little bit larger and newer, we had 46 respondents um, to that. And then again, we have group three, which is a little bit smaller and older. And then we had a group four, which is larger and older. Our findings from this. First one is that all wineries, regardless of the age and size, um, share a shift in the primary business concerns um, from the market industry concerns of 1999 to the more macroeconomic concerns of 2015. Um, the second finding is, is that all wineries, regardless of their age and size, share the same industry contextual factor concerns um, regarding their challenges that they're facing. And three, um, larger and older wineries are more focused on their entrepreneurial thinking than the smaller and younger firms, which is in contrast to the literature. So some discussion points from this, from what we found, uh, or what I found in uh, the data, is that over the 15 years between investigations, um, economic cycles and laws and regulations remain the critical challenges. Um, while climate change is emerging as a major change, as, as a major concern um, in Northern California. Uh, second, even with the emergence of the internet channels, direct-to-consumer marketing and the big and the use of big data to understand changes in consumer behavior, and the pursuit of technology prowess is of lesser importance than of financing and accounting skills. 
Lastly, um, the research on size in mature industries by um, this article in 2011 determined that where there are established industry innovation capabilities, then younger firms will have more entrepreneurial thinking. However, this research um, observes marketing and operation skills being sought by smaller wineries, while larger producers have a tendency to be more entrepreneurial minded, uh, which is a shift from the 1999 uh, survey of uh, Glensky et al. of 2000. Um, so that's kind of the unique findings that we found from this quick data. Future research on this, um, looking at this, uh, we could expand this investigation via collaboration with researchers in other regions to examine their contextual differences um, in like regional perceptions. And I think that we could do some comparisons among producing nations that would provide new areas for research and pedagogy to meet the specific regions, regional needs of wine producers. So with that, I did a faux pas of actually breaking a glass. <laughs> That's good luck. Oh, good, good. 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 Can you, on your prior screen, the first screen of findings, there was a comment about finance and accounting. Um, can you expand on what that, the second, second? Mm -hmm. It says lesser importance than finance and accounting. Can you so, expand on what that is? Well, I don't know how much more I can expand it, it, it because this is just kind of the results of the survey that was that we received. So, of the 308 um, wineries that were surveyed, in looking at it, um, what we found, or what, what the actually what the what the results of the survey came back as, um, was saying that there was. Um, just less less of an importance on the finance and accounting skills. Yeah, like, when they, when they, the question was the, the question was looking at the prioritizing. Um, what is what are the needs and what are the future skill sets that you're going to um, require uh, for the winery? This says pursuit of technology prowess is of lesser importance than finance and accounting. So right. I interpreted that that finance and accounting would be more important. Right. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I, I, I yeah. got confused. Yeah, no, you're absolutely correct. <laughs> Which is good for me, because that's what I do. Yeah. So, that's so you like my understand answer. what you're saying here. <laughs> right, and so um, it, it was, it's kind of an interesting, because we would think that it would be the other way around. So it was just kind of a, 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 a unique finding. So less importance on systems and software, more importance on finance and accounting. Yeah. That yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. consistent with, with what we're hearing of Washington State wineries too and their needs. Okay. It's, it's spoken to what, what I'm hearing is they can't find people. So right. I need to know if that's what they're saying. It's hard to find. I don't know. You know what? That would be an interesting thing to, to get into a little bit more. I, I don't know whether that is, whether it was a, it's a labor economics issue. Yeah. Or whether it's a strategic issue, mm -hmm. or, or like a strategic focus issue, or a labor economics issue. I don't know. Well, unfortunately, we're going to have to move along to the next very good. But thank yeah. you very much. Okay. Sure. Well, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you're a plant. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I did my master's from.
do that or just make the candidate and get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you for being here <coughs> for our presentation. We had a research based and an exploratory classification analysis of wineries of the inner pollution in Portugal. The work is made by my colleague Agustí, um, myself, and two more colleagues from the University of Barcelona. Uh, we we talk about this, these uh, different topics, proposal, location history, introduction, revision of uh, references, method, results, and finally reflections. First of all, the objective of this work is to analyze the different income models adopted by the wineries of a certain wine growing area called Emporia, a very small area. This area is clearly positioning itself in the last uh, year despite the, the crisis. A sample of uh, 27 wineries located in Emporta, municipality of northeastern Spain, has been analyzed. Uh, we uh, collect the dates um, from um, secondary sources and analyzing is the website of the companies. It contain analysis and descriptive and analysis have been applied. The wineries are small and similar. This makes them, ha them have to explore differentiating initiatives to gain identity. The study is centered in three um, points, on property, economic indicators, and parkets list score uh, as a competitive element. Just uh, to show a little situation, this is an uh, area is in the north of Spain. It's a very small area. Spain is a very small country inside the European community. Then we are talking about a very, very uh, niche uh, in an uh, area. Uh, the know, sorry, the French people know the area <laughs> because of the border. <laughs> the denomination of origin in Porta Costa Brava was contracted in 1975. <laughs> A little, a little story, very short, because we, <laughs> we don't have so much time. There, of them for that, constitute a very old analogy. Rhoda and Purias are the traditionally the cities considered entrance gates, where the Greeks introduced for, for first time the winers in the Iberic Peninsula, around 600 years before Christ. The wine tradition continued by the Romans and the more medieval monks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, with uh, the above mentioned, we find the interaction of three realities or maybe four, I'll say. The first reality is that we are in an uh, area where wine is produced all artisanally. It's uh, exploiting mostly in a familiar way, a small size, small size, and then very similar products. And the second reality is um, this area is a, is a very touristic area. Uh, with uh, is near to Costa Brava, uh, Inés and Girona. Is in a border area also. In the third is perhaps the, by French influence. In this area, there is uh, good restaurants uh, with a lot of uh, Michelin stars can can influence that. And in the fourth position is because the Emporda is a part of uh, Catalonia, which his capital is Figueres, and Figueres was the city was born one of our famous countries like Dalí, Salvador is a special, special area. But now in Dalí, I don't know, you know, the news in one week ago, this is an open the tomb, this is a decree of the surrealist, uh, because <laughs> The lady, a, a lady says that this, I am a daughter the, from the lady. <laughs> this is funny. Well, we our um, our research were based in three uh, at the beginning in three uh, important um, uh, uh, people. Well, people. Dijin recalls that historical uh, historically France was the showcase of luxury. Chefs, good maids, that have survived. Simmel state the class fashion change when the lower class has access to them. 
In fact, the democratization of fashion and luxury and the growing interest of the new world together with an emerging countries produce a new phenomenon who Leipovetsky has called as emotional luxury. In fact, all these uh, more recently other actor, authors uh, working in that way and thinking that there are some points to, to be uh, to analyze, recommendation of friends, tasting in a suitable restaurant, ranking parker, recommendation of wine expert, try something new. In fact, uh, most of these new these uh, points issue are related to gastronomy, accusing an authority of parker list. In addition, we have analyzed authors who explore the family property of the organization. Uh, not everyone has agreed with the same uh, explanation about which is the family property of organization. We choose the definition of family business developed by the European Union, but there are another uh, different uh, explanations. Uh, there, um, there, therefore, our aims in this work is, as I told before, to analyze the model of income adopted by the wineries, considering the property, the economic indicators, and the score of the list of factors. To achieve this goal, we have adapted, uh, adapted a study of Sorlimon, who defined models of income in the hot cuisine sector. They um, find three different models, depending on the revenue sources. The first model is watch your sales basket, which means that. Well, it means the group in which the restaurant focus only on the core business. The second uh, model for him is have as many baskets as you can. It means in this group, the restaurants, we are based the model on the diversification to exploit of possible resources of revenue. And third point, the third model, have the baskets you can handle. The group is built with those restaurants that choose to diversify only in some sources of revenue. So the diversification is lower than the model uh, before. Well, now uh, let me introduce my colleague, Agustin. He will We'll talk about uh, methodology and results. And this is up and down? And, and, this is up and you have about five minutes. OK, OK. Uh, so uh, the uh, identified population of Vietnamese in the Ampurda region uh, between 61 firms. But uh, there are two steps where the follow up the data. The first uh, was uh, uh, gather data from the website, and the second was the tour economic data. So we have information, information to, to six, uh, five, seven binaries, website called the Garden. Uh, there are um, three uh, collected information. The first, the uh, over, uh, ownership and people behind uh, the organization. This information was divided uh, in family ownership, business and other types uh, um, in ownership. B, activities offered. This information refers to complementary activities, uh, the products offered, for example, their service, hospitality, service, and, and other products. And the ending, the C, is our of the recognition of why. This video is based on the merit of the partner system. So, uh, the economic indicators is uh, only what is in everything, in Vita, in everything before this in Spanish, um, Iberico's balances, and also the return in is here or uh, A. So, uh, I prefer more later. This is an, an summary. I'll show you more later. This, uh, the, the, the thinking, is the uh, the three group for uh, Sulemon, but we uh, addition the, the, the last group in two subgroups. Uh, so this is A, B, C. This is what you sell basket, half the basket you do hunt or hunt, hunt, and half the money basket you can. This is the same, but this is the mix between group B and B and C. And this D group is similar than the previous, 
but uh, with more um, channels, but more shall you see. Well, this is a uh, family business, not family business, and, and cooperative. This is important and the, the little sample uh, with, with the analysis. So, uh, uh, group A. The first group includes say, seven, seven cases, 26%, which are film focused on, uh, on the core business, not diversification, uh, to create products that arrive from the grapes, like, uh, like wine, cava, or this or spirits, or, uh, or vinegar, or other tourist activity relative with the production of the wine. Also, visit uh, some cellar, etc. Uh, so the, the, uh, with the uh, line or in focus of the Sulemon, this is a what you say is basket. Mm -hmm. The group B, the second consists in A binaries, this is fifty percent, with diversity into another source of the revenue, like producing other products, economic activities, but no both. Uh, the, the diversification activities choose are even in product especially oil um, olive oil. Yesterday, you, know, you, you view there's some bottle in the, in the cellar, or in economic activities like accommodation, museum, in Ampula, for example, they have a mill, mill of oil, or um, an archaeological or heritage or some uh, historic or museum, little museum. So, and finality, finally, finally, the remaining. 12 films more and what is played uh, more, 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 more played here. In the group C, uh, group D, the group C, they are um, only 6 minutes, just 22%, uh, that developed two types of activity, mainly related to restaurant activity and organization, special um, gear visit. This group could be considered as mixed between group B and D. Before the explanation, this uh, the group D is similar, also six very, also twenty two percent, but develop all possible business from the maximum possible number of sources, especially diversified on four or more sources of revenue. This is in the same table there before two or three lights. Uh, so. Uh, um, this is a bit less complicated, but this is an analysis. This, uh, this is the um, situation the, this year, uh, the end of the period, and then the end of the period every two years. No? So they are the uh, our apportation, no, Solomon, three groups and four groups. And they are, for example, two binaries in 2012. This is a puntuation, wine points, uh, Parker. This is a down, this is a uh, up. No? This is, for example, the, this binary, there are 10 products. This is the punctuation, there are two mm, products more in this punctuation. Mm, two years more later, there are three binaries, this is in question. Mm -hmm. Now it's 10 products with uh, this punctuation, there are six with mm, up. And uh, the last year, there are three binaries, and this is this punctuation. Uh, down and this up eight uh, products, the top situation. What happened? Happened? Well, you want to continue the, the second, the three, but for example, the B, they are only one, the business is two winners, two um, hours, uh, zero, and this, zero, 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 because we are not nothing binaries, nothing binaries, uh, etc. Well, so, the problem, well, the problem, the reality, the, the, the analysis is the, the number of binaries that become part of the Parker list has increased for all the groups described. However, the number of hours winding binds, wines has decreased throughout the most recent edition of the list. If, if the analysis is presented by groups, the four group D, for example, D, has the highest number of the binaries and wine in the party list. The group, ta, uh, the group A, what I think, the group A uh, is the second. And the combination B and C, if you are the analysis, they are fluctuation. So, uh, the conclusion is that first, the binaries called be classified by revenue models depending on their diversification of the restaurants, etc. Uh, but, the, the ownership of the indicators and punctuation on by the, 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 the parker list uh, for, for uh, this analysis. And second, 
regarding the other analysis by Angus, family business is the most common type of ownership of thought. The group with the highest percentage of families managing business is not a shaving higher average, average of the economic indicators. Thus, it's important to use internal and external factors and classify the binary. Before ending the final reflections, implications of this research are uh, for binaries which can implement different levels of diversification and know the relationship with the other variables. As customs have several opportunities to enjoy for diversification, uh, so this research is not free because uh, of limitation. Why? The sample that we said is very small, no? it's the most important, as well as the data available for its the term. In addition, no data is available to which activity in addition more valuable theory. And finally, the future work will focus on obtaining data from the primary sources in order to define the more detail each cluster. Another future line will be accompanying different regions in order to analyze if, if there is pattern on the performance in the sheet. Well, this is all, but so we may it with you. Well, I'm afraid you've run out the clock.